Good morning, you guys. It is early morning and it is pouring rain out. It's supposed to pour rain all day today. So until I can take Gizmo to the vet when they open up, I thought this would be a good day to do a video about this topic and have a discussion about this. And uh, maybe I need to go live and uh, invite all you guys into the chat to have a longer conversation live over this. I'm going to today, and even if I have to leave a message, they're usually pretty good about getting back to me, but I'm going to call the Environmental Conservation Department Region 9 for my area. And I'm going to talk to an officer to find out if we have elk in our woods that most of us are unaware of. I mean, did the state do something and it just wasn't in the news? Do they do that? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to call an, uh, an officer and get his take, his or her take, on uh, this topic. And I'm also going to call the forest rangers because I'm not going to just talk to one or two people. I'm going to talk to several of them because when I try to get to the bottom of it, I want to get the take from many people as far as what do they know with different departments and agencies that they work with you know because these are people that are out there in the field doing their job and they're aware of all these different things that go on or should be so i am going to try to find out from them you know get a professional's perspective as far as what's what's out there in our woods do we have elk that's that's all i want to know but like a subscriber mentioned that, you know, if there was elk in our woods, when I hear it bugle more than just one time, I mean, I was there all day, all day, all evening, all night until 3.30 in the morning when I left. And I don't ever like leaving that early. But being that I've been woken up so many times, I figure might as well drive home. But you see, guys, up there at Pineapple Junction, when I, when I weigh um, audio against video, I hear more things than I see up there. Because the woods are, like most places that I go, are so thick and so dense. I mean, it's even the same way out behind my house. To give you that perfect example, the other day, when I heard a bear down at the bottom of the ravine going towards the swamp and all the animals in the forest were sounding off all the birds and the chipmunks giving off their warning and they didn't do it over me because I go back there all the time and I don't ever hear them doing that when I'm present in the woods but when I heard the snapping and crashing of a bear going through I couldn't see it I, I aimed my camera right at the forest you know where it was and you couldn't see a thing and usually the blackness of a bear stands out against the greenery. And it's the same way up at Pineapple Junction because the only visuals I had up there was two things. And that was the lights that one night at those people's campsite that spooked them and they took off. Those lights, those orb looking things that were going up through the trees. And then there was that black thing that looks like a dog and it runs really fast. It lasts only seconds and then it's gone. Much too quick to ever get that thing on any type of camera. I mean, even to turn my camera on, have the lens telescope out and then hit record, it's gone in that amount of time. So everything is just too damn slow. The slowest thing is my cell phone. There's nothing slower than that thing, turning that on and having it boot up. I'll tell you guys today, technology isn't as great as you think it is. But being that there is more to hear than there is to see i would say that it's far more important that i get a professional audio recording equipment with a sensitive mic that can hear a, a to a certain distance i don't even know what some mics are capable of today i'm sure they could probably i don't know maybe hear up to a half a mile a mile i i really don't know i gotta do research on this and uh i do know the recorder that is good i gotta find the mic to go with it so that way i can just let it go the whole time i'm there day and night and and record stuff because then if i had something i 
you know, didn't understand, I could take a snippet of the recording, email it to an officer and say, what is this animal that I heard in the woods? And then they'd be able to identify it and say, well, that sounds like a bobcat or it sounds like this, or it sounds like that. Because though I've been in the woods all my life, I'm not an expert on animals and the calls of animals. Like I know what, uh, the great blue heron sounds like when they're squawking going overhead because they do have roosting nests, nests up there at pineapple junction. There's a high population of heron and, uh, you know, you know, the different sounds of things, uh, owls, I hear owls up there all the time, you know, whether it's a great horned owl, a barred owl, whatever. And this thing was no damn owl. I mean, it was, I can't explain to you guys how loud this thing was. I told Sandy about it when I got home and I says, if you laid on the horn of my van, it was louder than the horn of my van. It was really loud and it was right, right outside my van. So it's like what animal of any kind, whether it's an elk or not, what animal would come right into your campsite, right near a vehicle. They've got to see the vehicle sitting there. Why would, why would something sound off right there? If they know like a human is present, if they see something that they know is not natural, like a van sitting in the woods, why, why would it? Why would it make that sound right there versus like way off in the forest, deep in the woods? That's what made no sense to me. It's like, why did it do that right outside my van? That I thought was strange. I thought that was more strange than what it might've been itself because why did it do it right there? That didn't make any sense because I didn't hear anything getting attacked. I didn't hear anything outside of that screaming. If it was an elk, why didn't I, you know, like a subscriber says, well, why didn't, why didn't the elk bugle throughout the day? Why didn't you hear it more than once? And that's a good question. I only heard it once and it was 1130 at night when it woke me up. Super loud, really loud. But because I haven't heard an elk bugle in person, like near me to get the gist of are they that loud when they're that close to you? How loud is it in person? I don't know. I've never been near an elk when it bugles like that. I can only find the audio on the internet because we're not supposed to have elk here. Yeah, it could have been an elk. But that's what I mean, you guys. And I'm a rational person that likes to have explanations for things because i believe that there are explanations for damn near everything on this planet though we do live in a weird strange un unexplained place there are a lot of explanations for things but i don't want to say it's x y or z because i honestly don't know i can't prove it was an elk i can't prove that it was anything my ears heard what they heard. It startled me awake and it was still going on as I woke up and opened my eyes and I'm laying there and then it, it was doing its scream call, whatever you want to call it super loud. And then it ended and I heard nothing else after that, nothing until later I fell asleep again. And then the rain woke me up at three 13 AM and I ended up leaving by three 30 after fixing coffee and getting some things put in place so I could drive. So I have no idea. I can't say for sure that it was an elk and I can't rule it out because it is possible that a large elk could be in our woods from somewhere. Maybe it came up through from Pennsylvania. I mean, I live only 15 minutes from the Pennsylvania, New York state line. I'm in Western New York. I'm just north of Northwestern Pennsylvania. And so there's elk that aren't too far away, but are they free roaming to where they could wander into New, to New York? And this is what I need to call an officer to find out. 
Do we have hunters that have seen them in our woods? Because I haven't, you know, every time people say, well, I've seen this in the woods and I've seen that in the woods. Well, damn, how come I haven't, you know, I don't hunt, but I'm in the woods almost as much as a hunter. And you would think that, and it don't matter if I have a gun in my hand or, or not. And if I'm out there hunting or not, if you're in the woods, you would think that you're going to see the same kind of stuff that hunters will see or trout fishermen or people that hike. I don't know. Seems like it doesn't that seem logical that, you know, that that's why I don't believe in a Bigfoot, you guys, because I never see a gigantic man track with big toes in the mud ever. And I'm always around areas where it's muddy, there's soft ground, there's swampy areas. I never see tracks of a Bigfoot. I've never seen a Bigfoot or a large, upright, hairy creature in the woods. I just never have seen one. Not even close. So when people tell me that they see them all the time, well, then send me a damn video of it. Send me a good, clear, not pixelated and blurry. Send me a damn good, clear photo of it. If you see them all the time, you got your cell phone. Send me a picture of it because until I see one, I'm not going to believe in, in those things. I don't care if I hear 10,000 tree knocks. Why? Because it is still possible that a human being can be doing a tree knock. And then because I hear it, I'm just going to assume, oh my God, that's a big foot. Uh, uh, nope. Who knows? See, that's what I don't like to do, you guys, when I'm out in the woods. I don't like to say it's this or it's that. Because until I have proof, I can't say. And I'm not going to say what's what. Because I'm left wondering. I don't even have the answer. So how can I give you guys the answer as far as to what, what it was? Because I don't even know. All I know is it sounded just like a large bugling elk. But come on, is there going to be a 700 pound or 800 pound elk right outside of my van at 1130 at night bugling and do it only one time? Don't you think you would hear an animal like that crunching and crashing through the woods as it walked away with that gigantic rack on its head? Or even if it was a female, something that big and heavy, don't you think you'd hear it breaking sticks? Or is it going to just walk away quiet as a cat? See, these are the things to where if you hear something and say, well, it's this, then isn't, isn't there going to be other sounds it's going to make? I don't know. You tell me. I don't, I don't think a 700-pound animal, if it's in my campsite, is going to be able to leave and wander off into the woods without making a damn sound. That's a big animal. I mean, even a horse walking through the woods. Can you imagine the sound a horse would make walking through just the woods, stepping on natural materials? It's going to make noise. And yet I heard not, none of that. And I would have heard it because typically up there at night, it, it is deafening quiet. It, it's so quiet. It, it, it's like being deaf. You don't hear anything until suddenly there's a sound of something whether if it's a big loud tree knock or something screaming or whatever, I guess cameras aren't as important as an audio recorder is. So I got to now buy an audio recorder and get a mic for it. I've got the money for it. Even though it's getting this late in the season, it's almost too late for it, but at least that would be more useful than a camera that doesn't ever seem to capture anything. I feel like I'm wasting my time with the cameras, but with the audio, well, you should then be able to hear what I'm hearing because if I take that into my software and say, this is what I heard at this time of night on this day at this location, here it is. Listen to it. This is what the audio recorder got. So because I hear more sounds than I have visuals. So it tells me that the audio is more important than the cameras because not even the trail camera has a mic. So it's just 
muted either photos or naturally photos would be muted, but I mean, it's, it's either photos or muted video. So I don't know why they don't build a mic into it. Then again, they don't make them run on lithium power packs either, which in my opinion is stupid. So, uh, I don't know you guys, but I'd sure like to know why there's so many weird things that go on up there. Why that place? But I'll tell you this. I will tell you this. For those that firmly believe in Bigfoot and say you've seen one or many and you're, and you're convinced they exist and know that they exist, and if you ever wanted to do some research on them, I would say that would be the best place that you could go. Because if there was one to exist in this area, that would be the place it would be. Because that place is thick and wooded, and it goes on for a long, long, long ways. There's thousands and thousands of acres up there. But when I go up to Tracy Ridge, I've never seen strange lights up there. And this is in northwestern Pennsylvania. I've never seen an elk. And I've been camping up at Tracy Ridge, you guys, for 19 years. Now, come on. That says a lot. In 19 years, every summer for 19 years, I've been going to Tracy Ridge and camping out up there throughout all the summers for 19 years. I have never seen lights in the woods up there. I have never seen an elk, never heard an elk bugling up there. Nothing. Nothing disturbs me at Tracy Ridge. Nothing comes around my van. Nothing tries to get on my van, into my van. I did see that black thing briefly run through the woods at Tracy Ridge, like I did at Pineapple Junction, same exact thing, and then it disappeared. That's the only thing that's ever happened up at Tracy Ridge that was strange. And uh, outside of that, there's been nada, nothing. You will see bear up there, which is normal. I've yet to see a bear at Pineapple Junction. I seen a huge one leaving out of Pine, Pineapple Junction 8.30 one morning when I was up there. Down at the bottom of the mountain. So yeah, an audio recorder up there? Oh man. I'd get a lot of the natural wildlife. I'd get the, the, the blue heron. I'd get the pileated woodpeckers. Um, I'd get the snort of deer that are coming through the area because you do see deer. There's all kinds of natural sounds you get and probably unnatural sounds. So an audio recorder would just be full of all kinds of sounds that I could get. But until somebody can hear something that I record and say it, that sound you heard and you recorded, that is this. It's this or it's that someone could explain it, especially if I couldn't identify it, I would give the recording to someone that could. And it would be no different if I got something on video and I didn't know what it was. And I'd be like, look at this. What the hell is this? But I haven't gotten anything on video up there. So I don't know. But that elk bugle, not saying it was an elk, but that's what it sounded like. I don't know why I only heard it once. Why only that time? Never heard it before. Don't know if I'll ever hear it again. I hope I don't because, man, that was super loud and freaky sounding. And I don't want to wake up to that again. Because when I go camping, I like to have a good night's sleep. I mean, that's part of the reason why I go is to just get some peaceful sleep. So I don't know, but I think, I think that the audio recorder is going to be far more useful than any camera that just eats batteries for nothing. 
because I don't ever, I don't ever see something to where it's like, I got to quickly hurry up and grab my camera. There's just no time. Things happen so fast. There's just no time for it. So I think that's what I'm going to focus on next is getting the audio recorder. Outside of that, I don't know what else to get to help with. It's not actually like an investigation. It's just, I like having things with me because if I'm going to be camping there anyway, it's nice to have equipment to be like, well, you know, I'm here. Let's set this up and see what it gets. Let's put up a camera. Let's turn on a recorder. You know, as long as I'm going to be there, I might as well have some equipment I can use to help with the mystery of what the hell is going on up there. And, uh, but I think an audio recorder would be far more beneficial than any camera because the cameras, they don't ever get anything. So I think that's what I'll get next is the audio recorder, but yeah. So elk, well, I don't know. I really don't know. He's possible, but I don't know. I can't say because I didn't see it. And uh, I'm starting to wonder if I would be better off with the lights looking straight off the sides of my van. The passenger side one looking straight off the side. The driver's side one looking straight off the driver's side because, God, I'll tell you guys, no matter wh where I aim stuff, it always seems like it's just outside of the field of whatever is it is. If it's the light, it's like it's in the, it's in the dark part just out of the light and if it's a camera it's just out of view it's it's crazy i guess i got to have stuff all the way around the van I, I should probably have lights all the way around the van and cameras all the way around the van 360 degrees then it could not escape it's frustrating because i take the time i spend the money and i still get nothing for all my effort but i'll keep going keep trying and uh I don't know. So I'm going to call those departments today, speak to a forest ranger, talk to a game warden, talk to uh, all kinds of different um, environmental officers and see what I can find out about this elk mystery. They'll probably laugh at me because they'll know the location. As soon as I tell them, they'll be like, nah, there's no elk up there. We don't have elk in New York. Who knows? Or they may say, yeah. We're, we're starting to bring in elk and there's elk in the woods. So then I'll have to get used to seeing those. Uh, probably the first time I see will scare the shit out of me because I'm not used to seeing a 700 pound deer come out of the woods. So, uh, because they are of the deer family. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below, but anymore. Pineapple Junction now has got the title number one, number one for the most strange things that go on in the forest. It's, it's up there for whatever reason, weird stuff goes on up there. Now I expect that every time I go, because it happens so often, it's like, you know, there's a good chance that you'll hear or see something who knows, but I do want to get up there some more before it's all over with before it gets too cold to stay up there. So let me know what you guys think down below, but I'm going to check with the officers and then I will let you know what I find out after I talk to these people and uh, see what they say. Thanks for watching you guys. We'll see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.